How's it going guys? Today I want to go over another lead code question. Today our question is called Kth smallest element in a BST and this is a question that's currently being asked by Facebook right now. Brain drop, drop top, drop top, smoking on cooking the hot pot, cooking, fucking on your bitch, yeah, that, 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 cooking up dope in the cork pot, pot. All right, guys, today our question is called Case Smallest Element in a BST. Again, this is a question that's being asked by Facebook. And our problem description says, given a binary search tree, write a function case smallest to find the case smallest element in it. Note, you may assume that K is always valid and K is between one and the BST's total elements. So we'll never be given a K that's invalid. Great, and all we're asked is to actually find the case smallest element in the binary search tree. So it seems pretty straightforward. Let's go through our examples here. So if we're asked to find the first or first smallest or the smallest element in a particular binary search tree, and this is our tree here, we'd want to return one, right? Because again, one is clearly, clearly the smallest element in this binary search tree. Moving on to our next example, if we're asked to find the third smallest element in a binary search tree, and this was our tree, we'd actually return three, because again, three is going to be the third smallest element in this binary search tree. So it has nothing to do with one being one and three being three, it just happens to be random examples and it works out that way. But as we can clearly tell, one is the first smallest element here, two is the second smallest element here, and three is the third smallest element here. And because k is three, we would then want to return three because it's the third smallest element. Great. So hopefully that makes sense. And from those two examples, we can kind of recognize a little bit of a pattern. But maybe if you want to, you can look at other trees and try and figure out what the pattern is. If you guys do, go ahead and pause the video, try and figure it out. But I'm just going to tell you. Um, so we quickly notice, right, hopefully, that one is the smallest element in the tree, and it's actually furthest to the left, right? So that is our first smallest element in the tree. It's all the way to the left, and then everything else will come in a different order, right? Uh, similarly here, right, three is going to be specifically the third element in our in-order traversal of a tree. That's really what I should have said for this example as well. Not only is it furthest to the left in this tree, right, because it's the first smallest, but if we actually had an in-order traversal of this tree, which again would give us the elements of this tree in an ascending order, it would be the first element in the list. So what this is really boiling down to is that if we can do an in-order traversal of this tree and return the kth thing in that list, that will give us the answer, right, because that will actually be the kth smallest. Uh, because again, an in-order traversal will actually give us all the elements in the tree in ascending order. Great, so like crazy rocket science, um, that's kind of what we have to do here. So we have to do an in-order traversal of this tree and just return the kth thing that would be uh, in our list. But so we're going to optimize this a little bit and we're actually not going to use an entire list, right? So a list, if we had to store all the elements in the tree, that would be O of n. Um, we're actually still going to have O of n overhead because we're going to do this recursively, but we're going to try and cut down a little bit on the memory complexity because all we need to do is remember two different things, right? The first thing we need to remember is simply uh, what element we're on, right? Where in our in-order traversal we are, are we at the first smallest element, the second smallest element, third, so on and so forth. And then the second thing we want to remember is just the result that we want to return, right? Because at the end of the day, we're trying to give back the actual value of the kth smallest element. So to do that, we're just going to store two different things in an integer array. The first index will represent where we are in the tree, right? The first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, so on and so forth. And the second thing will just be the result we want to return. So to start our code, let's start doing that. So we're going to do an in-order traversal of the tree and use this integer array with two different elements to help us keep track of what we want. And eventually we'll just return the second index in that array, which will be the kth smallest value. Okay, so that's a lot of talking. Hopefully it makes sense. Uh, we're going to need an integer array. We're just going to call this nums, and this is going to be a new integer array with two different things. Again, the first thing is just where we are in our tree, the first smallest, second smallest, so on and so forth. And the second thing is going to be the value that we want to return. And now, right, I always like to write these recursive functions as just, uh, you know, somewhere outside, obviously, and this is our shell function, right? So we only need three different lines, right? We're going to do, we're going to initialize our integer array. We're going to call an in order traversal with our root, with our nums, and with k. Uh, we need to pass nums because we need to actually store the k smallest thing eventually. Uh, and we need k because we need to know what is the k thing, right? What value of k we're looking for. And then if we write this in order function traversal, this in order traversal correctly, all we should have to do is return nums of one like we just said. 
Okay, so now again, this is the meet of our program, and now we just need to modify our in order traversal to actually store the result inside of nums. So we're gonna say public. It's not gonna do anything right, it's not gonna return anything. All it's gonna do is modify nums. So we could say void, we called it in order, and it's gonna take a tree node called root, it's gonna take an integer array called nums, and it's gonna take an integer called k. Great. So now we just want to traverse the tree, right? So a traditional in order traversal, we could just do something like if our root is null, and this will just help ensure that we're gonna bottom out of our recursion at some point, right? We need a base case to stop recursing. Uh, and if it is, we just want to return, right? Because we don't need to do anything. We don't need to return anything from this function because it's void. And otherwise, if we don't actually hit this base case yet, in an in order traversal, we always want to go left first, right? So we're going to say in order of root.left, nums, and k. And now, once we get all the way to the left in our tree, we traverse the, tree, uh, the leaf's left child. We're going to hit this base case and return back to that leaf. So now this is where we actually do our processing. And what we want to know is, are we at the kth thing, right? So we need to check the count of our first value in our nums array. So if plus plus of num zero is equal to K, because remember we're starting at zero and they're giving us a, a one based number, right? The first smallest thing is not called the zero smallest thing. So now when we're actually on the very, very far uh, first leaf all the way on the left, that will be the first smallest element, right? So in this example, we would actually just be storing that value one. So we wanted to, if we're ever at the kth smallest thing, we will trigger this if statement. And now we just want to store whatever's at the root value because we know we're at the kth smallest thing. So we'll say nums of one equals root dot val. And then again, that's all the processing we need to do, right? We don't need to do anything else. We just found our answer. So we could just return. There's no point in continuing to tra traverse a tree. And if we never actually hit this if statement yet, we need to continue so that we can actually get to the kth element, right? The kth smallest node. So we'll just say in order of root.write, nums, and k. So we can continue traversing the tree. Okay, awesome. So just at a high level again, we need nums to keep track of those two different things. Are we at the kth smallest element, right? It's a count and uh, we need to actually store that value somewhere. Then we're gonna do an in-order traversal of our tree. Um, so again, we're gonna go all the way to the left side of the tree, hit our base case, um, and continue traversing, asking if we've ever gotten to the case smallest thing, let's make sure that we store the value that we want in return. And otherwise we need to keep traversing the right side of the tree. And again, that will continue bubbling back up uh, into our previous recursive calls to make sure that we're traversing the entire tree. Um, and finally, once this in-order traversal returns, we'll just return whatever we stored at the first index in our nums array. So now to talk about our time and space complexity. Our time complexity in the worst case is going to be O of n, right? Because we're asked for the largest thing in the tree. That will be the very last thing in the tree. And because we're doing in-order traversal, we will process that last. So our runtime is going to be O of n, where our n is the number of nodes in the tree. And similarly, um, the space complexity is also going to be O of n because if we just had a giant tree that looked like a linked list that just looked like this, the depth of our recursive calls would also be n, uh, n stack frames deep. So we also would say that our time, our space complexity is O of n as well. Uh, so let's run this code. Let's make sure that it works. Uh, I forgot a comma. Let's try to make sure it works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve kth smallest element in a BST. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Facebook. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. I'll talk to you guys next time. We came from nothing to something, nigga. Hey. I don't try nobody grip the trigger. Nobody call up the gang and they come and get janked. Cry me a river, give you a tissue. Bad and bullshit.